Hello and welcome to Impact and Response to COVID-19 in Youth Baseball webinar presented by 431 Sports. My name is Darren Smith and today I have been joined by four baseball directors who have kindly taken the time to discuss the way their organisations are working to navigate the challenges of today. Before I introduce our panel, I'd like to thank all of you who registered for this webinar. We're inspired by seeing how many clubs, players, families, coaches and communities are working hard to continue to develop during this challenging time. In addition to our efforts to support our club partners with helpful content on social media, we felt it critically important to feature leaders in the baseball community and facilitate discussion. We hope our panelists' perspectives and suggestions can lead to productive conversation and potentially help other organizations in similar situations. On that note, we have several topics outlined that our panelists will discuss, but feel free to submit any questions during the webinar via the question box. We'll address them as soon as possible, and we'll follow up afterwards sharing additional information. Quick note, we are recording this webinar and we'll be sharing it in the coming days for you to refer back to and share with others in the baseball community. So without further ado, let me introduce our four panelists. Firstly, we have Director of Baseball Operations at Marucci Elite Texas, Jordan Venable. How's it going, Jordan? Good, how's everybody doing? Good, thanks. Next, we have uh, National Director of US Elite, Mark Housel. Thanks for being here, Mark. Hey, good to be here. Coming from Chino Hills, California, and representing Dirt Dog Baseball, Director Kyle Billingsley. Hey, Kyle. And, yeah, and finally, Assistant Director of Baseball at Four Sports in Ohio, Larry Mosley. Hey, Larry. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thanks for joining. Thanks for being here, guys. Uh, I'm sorry it took such awful circumstances for us to get together. Um, on behalf of everybody at 431 Sports, we greatly appreciate your willingness to discuss the way your baseball organizations have been working to stay in the game. All right, so uh, let's get into this. Um, starting with Jordan in Houston. Jordan, can you talk us through some of the immediate effects this has had on Marucci Elite and what some of the things your club has been doing during this period? Yeah, um, you know, it, it's it's been really, really tough um, for a, a lot of the kids just because baseball is kind of their way of, of getting out and doing things, and, and you know, it's taken that away from them. Um, it, I really feel bad, like, like for the, in our case, the 14-year-olds and the seniors because this is an important time for those guys to get reps and, and things like that for the seniors. Uh, in order for them to be noticed, some of them, uh, those that haven't signed or whatever, and their their senior season may have been cut short. Uh, and for our 14 year olds who are getting ready to go to high school, it's a big year for those guys. And, and for them not to be able to get in right now, the amount of reps that they need to get them ready, uh, you know, with development and, and getting them ready to play high school baseball, it's extremely tough. And, and it's something that's out of all of our control. Um, at the same time, we've kind of got to hit it head on. Uh, we've, we've been able to send out some training stuff and put some trust in, in our guys and, and hopefully be able to trust them that they're able to do the things that we're asking them to do outside of the facility without somebody watching them. You know, the old saying is it's always good to work whenever nobody's watching. Um, we're, we're putting it to the test right now because, unfortunately, nobody's able to be around. Um, but hopefully there's a light at the end of the tunnel coming soon for everybody across the country. And, you know, we'll be able to get back on the field as soon as possible. Good stuff. Mark, uh, what about US Elite? What sort of things um, impacted you immediately? Well, I think one of the things is going to be common to all of us is none of us have ever experienced this before. So, you know, we all run organizations. And, and one of the things that I was paying close attention to right out of the gate is, OK, what? What happens to our organization when we face this kind of adversity? You know, I'm I'm probably king of cliches. So one of my cliches is you're either part of the problem or part of the solution. So we started talking to our people about being part of the solution. Another cliche, turning lemons into lemonade. So it's been interesting for me to see how tight our organization can be throughout this, this adversity. And I'm happy to say, the organization seems strong, seems tight. Um, we've been spending more time together than we've ever spent together. I, um, I'm i a pretty prolific writer, so I write a lot of things, but in a busy world, 
my son reminds me often that almost nobody ever reads anything I write. So, <laughs> so one positive, I think, if, if you can imagine there's positives in this, is that people have slowed down and they've started paying attention a little more. They're a little more focused and there could be good come out of that. So, you know, that's just some of the some of the stuff initially in, in the first uh, go round here that we've experienced. Yeah, obviously, you know, different parts of the country have been uh, impacted on a different timeline. So what about um, up in Ohio, Larry? Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, it's like all of us here. Um, you know, we've never dealt with something like this before, but uh, coincidentally, before before this whole year starts, you know, uh, every year, uh, myself uh, and my my partner Josh Beeman, um, we actually we actually look for ways to actually make our kids more more independent and not be relied on us to just to spoon feed them everything. So um, this year we actually we actually have bought the uh, the software Driveline Track, which actually uh, allowed us to you know send kids workouts, you know, have them communicate with us. I mean, we have over 300 and 320 kids in our program. So um, it's a lot of families and a lot of kids to actually, to actually manage. So once this happened, you know, um, uh, by the habits we had before, you know, this whole pandemic happened, it allowed us to, to, to build habits that, that the kids can just be more, um, more to themselves. So, I mean, um, this time is allowing us over a force to be, to be transparent, um to actually realize the fact that we don't have all the answers and just and just uh have zoom calls do webinars do, do whatever just to make sure that they understand that um that we're here for them and that and that during this time you know um you know it's no other better time to actually band together and just you know be who we are which which is hopefully one so yeah yeah i think that's a good point you know i think a lot of people are becoming um experts in, with technology these days having to do things like this um on go to webinar but we'll talk a little bit about the communication between your coaches and your memberships in a, in a bit but what about you carl in california you know what were what were some of the things that you did in when you realized that you know this was a uh, quite a big thing going on but one of the i guess like you're talking about geography one of the bad things about being in california is california tends to overreact on stuff early um but it actually turned into a good thing because we were shut down a long time ago every field every gym every everything were shut down um early which we talked as a program actually i think is going to help our guys because it's for the first time some of these kids have had two three weeks off of throwing to rest that they've never taken before i'm um, in mm -hmm. california we go 365 days a year all year round where they don't ever have a chance to rest and so because we were shut down early we had the luxury of resting for about a month and then getting our high school like jordan was saying our high school guys are 14 year old guys um, ready for their varsity tryouts or their high school tryouts because it is a stressful time for those guys going in my son is in eighth grade um going into high school and it was a stressful time to get baseball Away, but he was able to rest, recuperate, get strong, and then now hopefully come back even better. But we just have to get back on the field. That's the that's the hard part. That's it. Yeah, it's it, it is a hard thing knowing what's going to happen. Um, obviously, you know, clubs have been impacted uh, across the nation when it comes to some of the tournaments that they're playing in. Um, Mark, when it when it comes to sort of tournaments, what sort of impact do you think it might have on the way? those are uh, events ran or the way they're attended by spectators do you see any change in that in the future or i i can't imagine that there won't be some pretty dramatic changes um there's a there's a facility here in our area that runs tournaments and the director and the owner of that told me that uh out of the gate he was going to have parents it's kind of crazy but his facility you can line up in the parking lot outside the fence he was actually going to have parents doing that instead of coming into the facility initially um that's going to be really it's going to be hard for the uh the the parents but probably good for the coaches <laughs> <laughs> i shouldn't yeah, say right. that. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah no it's in all seriousness what we were all thinking <laughs> right exactly someone there. had to do it <laughs> <laughs> Look at everybody. They're they're getting off the webinar right now because of the right. phone. 
Uh, what no. about what about you, Kyle? Do you think uh, you know the way these events are going to be ran differently? What do you think they're going to be certain things that organizers implement to try and get back quicker or to try and make it feel safer for players and parents? I don't know if DCCA did it in the rest of the country, but I know the last couple of tournaments they had before we completely shut down. They were eliminating like the post-game handshakes, the handshakes at the umpire conference. Um, the parents weren't allowed to come near the dugout, which is like you were saying, it was kind of good. Um, players weren't allowed to share bats, uh, things like that. So that might become the norm now. Um, I know our, uh, I also coach high school. Our high school went to uh, where no handshakes after um, for the same reason. So, I mean, little things like that, I think little things that we're experiencing in the stores and everything with the six foot and all the little X's in the stores on the ground um i think those are gonna might become normal from now on which is kind of weird mm -hmm. yeah definitely um a change uh larry your program um has multiple sports under the umbrella uh force have there been any talk um with baseball and the other sports on on how you might mitigate safety factors going forward yeah, yeah. So um, so right before Ohio was completely shut down, um, we had a whole plan in place in which, you know, uh, parents, they would have to they would have to carpool. Um, uh, you know, they can have one one parent per per group of kids to actually um, drop off and actually stay and actually watch the kids over here, over here in Ohio. And I don't, I don't know if it's the same thing for you guys, but um, we have we have parents that sit there and watch every single second of our practices. So um <laughs> so i mean so i mean when it actually comes down to it we were already cut down you know how many how many bodies we had in the whole building because of the fact that you know you go to whole foods over here um you know there's there's a line out the door because they're only allowing x amount of people inside the building at a time so um at the first um especially with with all of our with all of our with all of our facilities and we turn over our whole fields every hour um uh when it comes down to it we were trying to make it transparent and, and, and apparent that we were cleaning at all times you know like we had people visibly clorox in this clorox in that so i mean um over here over here with all of our facilities it's, it's it's such a hard thing to actually manage but at the same time um we were trying to make sure that people understood that we were making uh changes as far as when it comes to people being in the building so yeah it's good uh, for organizations to show that they're being proactive and trying yeah. to find solutions to to these um you know, there are a lot of people out there that are scared right now. Um, Jordan, do you, do you think um, going forward, this might affect memberships and registrations for organizations like Marucci Elite? Or do you, con do you think, you know, registrations should be sort of on par with before? Um, you know, personally, I think that it, it's a lot of organizations are going to see one result or, a, or another based on how they handled this situation with the current teams and, and memberships that they have. Um, you know, whether you were still charging people, you know, even though we weren't doing anything. Um, now, I'm not saying that, you know, charging somebody in, in this situation wasn't the right thing to do, but, you know, we I think across the board, we've all had to readjust how we've, uh, come up with what we're charging people and what we're charging them for. And with, especially with the month of April being completely off for basically everybody across the country, you know, whether you built enough good faith with people on, you know, do we delay those payments or defer them to a later month or what are you trying to do? You know, did you sit around for the month of April and never communicate with parents and players and, and send them anything that they could be doing? One thing for us was, it was important for me, especially for our older guys in our youth program, our 13s and 14s, to make sure that they understood, uh, you know, the work needs to be done on your own. So we sent them a weekly pitcher's routine from a flat ground to their bullpen day to their simulated game day because we told them once we hopefully get back going, we're not going to have the month that we normally have in the beginning of spring in order to ramp back up and get your arms back into shape and get you know, things where they need to be. None of us here are in the business of hurting kids. And the last thing we want to see is somebody get hurt because of the fact that they're not ready to go when these tournament directors may be ready to go and it's their livelihood. 
you know, talking about the tournaments and what things may be different. I know in Houston, they our, our facility that we operate out of has already uh, we host U Triple S A tournaments, and like Kyle was saying, you know, it's already come up that when we resume play, dugouts are going to be completely shut down. You're going to have players outside of the fence with their bags and stuff six feet apart. Uh, it's going to be a little different. It's going to be a little frustrating sometimes. We're worried about the guy on deck getting ready and getting ready to hit, and he's late getting there because he's completely outside of the field. But, again, I, I think, you know, when it comes to future memberships, it's all about how you handle this and how you went about communicating with your parents and players and how you uh, treated them during this pandemic. And, and like Mark said, you know, becoming one and, and truly making people feel like it's bigger than anybody involved um, is what brings people together and makes people want to be a part of it. Everybody wants to naturally be a part of something bigger than themselves. And the second you can make people feel like that, I don't think it'll have any negative effect if you've done a good job doing that. Now, if you haven't, then yes, obviously you could see people running for the hills and whatnot. Um, but, you know, from a standpoint of, of future memberships and things like that, I think all of us are trying to figure out a way to get back on some sort of a normal timeline. I know for us here down in Houston, we hold two tryouts a year in the fall and the spring. And that's the biggest challenge right now is when to end the spring summer season so we can still somewhat get back to that normal timeline of having a fall tryout and not having to go all the way till next January with a different, you know, uh, uh, the same team without having a tryout. So, yeah. And Kyle, talking of tryouts and, and forming teams and stuff, um, you know, how will, how will you guys, Dirt Dogs, handle, handle it with a, with a shorter timeline? Our our season, we, we value multi-sport athletes a lot in our program. Uh, so we encourage football, basketball, soccer, and stuff in the fall. So we actually stop um, in around August, middle of August, and let those guys play, and then we restart in November. A few of our teams play through the fall if they don't have any football guys or anything on there. But um, So our tryouts are usually uh, November, October, November, around there. Um, our high school team tryouts are May, so we're going to have to push those back. Right now we're hoping for a Memorial Day, um, getting our teams together before Memorial Day. Uh, so we kind of have, like, saying we have two tryouts, a, a, a late spring and then a fall tryout. Um, but getting those teams together, we go November until August. And so we're kind of right in smack in the middle of our season. Um, so we're, we're not going to see any adjustments with the – the younger kids, but the older kids, we're gonna have to push that tryout back until maybe Memorial Day or June. Sure. And and going back to you know Jordan's point that some clubs are going to be doing this very well, um, communicating to their their members um, and showing great transparency and hopefully providing value to to their members, which will allow them to retain players. Do you do you think it's uh, a similar situation where? You know, good clubs who are doing it right during this period will better retain their players than than clubs who, you know, have gone AWOL a little bit during this time. Do you think they might see, you know, players leave for other organizations or other sports? Yeah, oh yeah definitely. I think, you know, I think good organizations like Mark and Larry and Jordan, um, we do things for the right reasons. We're doing things to develop the kids, to get them prepared for the next level, whatever it is, whether it's high school or college or pro. Um, so the already the parents are going to see that and they're going to stay. Um, if they don't see that and they go somewhere else, there will probably lose other reasons for that anyways. Um, but I think it's going to kind of help programs like ours where the, at least in California, you get a lot of the, the dads that their kids are playing shortstop. So they go start their own team. And then there's, <laughs> uh, there's, we got a lot of individual single little travel teams around here. I think those are yeah. teams that are going to kind of drop off. And then those players are going to see the value in organizations like this and they're going to come be a part of us. So I think it's going to help us. Um, but what we got to keep doing is what we've been doing all these years. They're using this time, like Jordan was saying, to work on other things, uh, pitching routine. Uh, we do mental games when the month we took off, um, middle of March till the middle of this month. Uh, we didn't t- we didn't throw any balls or do anything outside, but we had a Google Classroom set up where it's all mental stuff videos, uh, slides, everything like that, where they're taking tests, taking notes. So they're learning that part, which normally we wouldn't have a whole lot of time for. So um, organizations like this, like we have here, 
puts a good product out there. So we, I think we'll retain the people. Good stuff. Um, good, talking a little bit more about the communication side of things, uh, Mark, um, you know, how are you engaging with your membership in general? You know, what sort of cadence are you using and what sort of, what's the message really coming out from uh, USLE right now? Because obviously there is so much up in the air. Yeah, well, as these guys were talking, it's obviously they care and love, love their, their players and their families. Another cliche that I've, I've used many times and we've all heard, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And this is the perfect time. You know, it's, it's not about, you know, bravado. It's about, hey, we care about you. So that communication that's going on between organization directors and their parents is huge because everybody's scared to some degree. Every, everybody's certainly uncertain. We all kind of gravitate, you know, to, to each other. So if you have leadership that is communicating regularly, gives people security that gives people hope I, I i'm an optimist so i'm always talking about when we play again and i can't tell you how many parents have written me and said thanks for for giving us something to look forward to you know like you know if you watch the news every day you can get pretty depressed so we we use conference calls i'm sure these guys are using conference calls we use uh freeconferencecall.com Literally, we we will have we've had almost a thousand people on one call uh, this in this pandemic, and it's free. And so so that's an easy tool to use. Uh, we can record those, so when people miss those calls, they can listen in again. Obviously, we're using webinars, just like um, everybody is using. Um, we have an internal communication system, so we're posting a lot of different things internally. So nobody nobody's feeling left out nobody's feeling isolated nobody's feeling abandoned and as these guys were talking there was one thing i wanted to mention that's something that's starting to happen right now for us we are starting to get a lot of players i say a lot i see an increase of people that were kids that were on teams that their teams are completely uncertain two three four kids can't play this summer parents got laid off i get all that and their teams are like literally disintegrating, imploding, and they're coming to us saying, hey, do you have any room on your rosters? And the advantage of the, all these guys on here, they're running organizations. When you're running an organization, you're not, a player's not limited to one team. You can, right. We can help kids. They can come on board in an organization. So there's a lot, that, that, man, I'm coming up with a lot of cliches today, but there's safety in numbers. And so when you're in an organization, you know, you don't, you don't, your team's not going to implode, most likely. Right. That's a good point. What, what about you, Larry? You know, how are Force um, sort of engaging with uh, not only the players, but the coaches? Um, uh, I mean, I mean, truth be told, and uh, and uh, um, this is kind of kind of me showing show my age a little bit over here, but um, uh, we actually, we've actually had, had a, had a Force MLB, MLB, um, what's it called? MLB the show uh, tournaments, you know what I mean? Like, like having, have, having, having ways of just showing kids uh, and actually, and actually communicating on their level, as far as, Hey, um, if you want to get your butt beat, hook, hook up the whole, the whole sport, we'll go ahead, we'll go ahead and uh, after the right way. But, but with us actually being on there, um, actually, actually showing them in real time, you know, why are you using this whole, this whole pitch selection? Like, like this is the reason why I call pitches and you don't because of what you're doing here on, on this video game. So it's stuff like that in which, in which uh, uh, we use um, we use that we use Zoom. Um, like I said, driveline track has been has been uh, has been wonders since we've been using it for the last eight months. Kids have kids have um, you know months and months and months of of uh, of um, you know pliable care stuff and this and that and the other. But um, to be told, we've also we've also just been picking up the phone. Um, all all of our teams, all all thirty two of our of our um, of, of our teams have. Have you know team parents? We actually communicate directly with those team parents, and they kind of facilitate, you know, whatever uh, whatever kind of message we need. Uh, in addition to to kind of give us that added the added uh, support system. So um, in between Zoom calls, PlayStation, uh, driveline track, in addition to uh, team app, um, you know, you know, we we go ahead and just this you know flood and and just mass populate what we need to, and you know, and um, just follow up when we need to. 
good stuff and then and then jordan um when when you're communicating with families are they expressing concerns that they have are they you know what are the most common questions that they're asking you because i'm sure they have many uh you know so we have in just in our houston base probably 130 kids in the youth program um out of baseball usa and i actually had one in march that expressed you know his parents reached out and said hey out of out of sheer abundance of caution we're going to go ahead and, and call it a season basically uh and we're not going to play again until the fall and, and you know it's tough to hear as a coach and a director that you're losing a kid uh but at the same time like i was talking about earlier you've got to respect people's decisions and i, I we made it very clear here that you know you've got to do what's best for you and your family individually um it's our job as an as the director of an organization and the owner of an organization to fill those holes if we need to and, and i think mark brought up a great point you know, where there's a lot of teams that are individual teams, not necessarily an organization that are going to run into exactly what he was talking about earlier, where you've got three or four parents that aren't comfortable. And I understand, I get it, and I respect it. Uh, but at the same time, again, as the director or owner, you've got to figure out a way uh, to take care of those other seven people. And I actually sent out an email yesterday. There is the option or, or possible opportunity that we could get started as soon as may 2nd or 3rd in some sort of a jamboree and i had to send out an email yesterday saying i need to know who's in or out and, and i respect your decision no judgment uh but at the same time i want you to make the decision that's best for you and your family and i've got to make a decision for 130 families uh on the youth side here so you know the biggest question for us has been you know, as long as we're cleared to go, we're good. Uh, what are we going to do to, you know, kind of adhere to the social distancing guidelines and concerns of the CDC and the and the government? Um, I think those are the biggest things. But at the same time, I also think that it's the perfect opportunity. You know, you talk about cliches, Mark. We all talk to our kids at some point during every season. Doesn't matter what year, what you know, age group about the fact that travel baseball and baseball in general is a, is a privilege. Any sport is, it's a privilege. It's not a right. And if this situation doesn't show kids and parents that it is absolutely a privilege, you know, to be able to do what we do and your kids have the opportunity to do what they do, then I don't know what will. Um, so I think that that has kind of caused people to want to jump back in some more than others. You know, some of the responses I got yesterday were, we're in as soon as we're ready to go. Others were, as long as we're cleared by guidelines, we're in. Um, so I think that that's, you know, it showed some people that like to complain about a lot of different little things that really at the end of the day don't matter what this is about. And it's about their kids and their development. Um, so I think that's been very, very helpful from a perspective standpoint for parents and players. Good stuff. Um, you're talking about sort of the training for the players, um, and Carl, you were talking previously about, you know, making sure that your pitchers stay on a routine. Um, are there any sort of training materials or partners that you are particularly recommending that your players, you know, look at during home training? You know, obviously, you as an organization are trying to provide them with materials to to develop and to stay, stay fresh. Where are you finding those materials for the most part? Is this for anybody? Is that question this is for you, Kyle. Sorry. <laughs> oh, Kyle. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, well, we actually, one of the things that... Um, I like to do like we're talking about cliches is I don't know everything. Um, so I, I rely on a lot of my assistant coaches and a lot of people to put input into an organization. And so we have little bits and pieces of a lot of stuff. Um, a lot of training methods, a lot of, uh, there who, 
is our pitching coach in our organization. He a big move. So we kind of have a, a scene of things that we have, and we put it in kind of a book form, a kind of a, a dirt dog owner's manual. We call, it, we call it a dirt dog owner's manual for the brain, where it tells them what we expect them to do month for month, week for week. Um, and so there's not one specific uh, like drive line or anything like that that we use. Uh, we kind of use a mixture of everything. Uh, like, for example, our mental games, we use a lot of Brian Kane uh, stuff, um, a lot of Ken Revisa stuff. Uh, we use a lot of that. Um, just kind of a mix of take what we like from each one and, and put it together and form a kind of a dirt dog philosophy. Perfect. Um, and what about you, Mark? Yeah, we had our kickoff dinner uh, in December, um, and we introduced three new partners to our program. We introduced Blast Motion, we introduced Interpro App, and we introduced Crossover Symmetry. And it's amazing because at that time, obviously none of us knew any of this was coming. And all three of those training tools have been gigantic in this quarantine time. So for instance, Blast, we're having swing contests every, um, every week. We have team swing contests, player swing contests. Obviously that's fun for the kids to compete. Um, but it's also, we're looking at their numbers. Every coach has his own dashboard looking at the metrics of every single kid on his team. So that's going on. Then you got Interpro, which is an app. We talk a lot about accountability at US Elite mm -hmm. and Interpro app is literally showing us exactly what kids are doing uh, physically, mentally, and nutritionally. So you know, we have a saying, you, you can run, but you can't hide. So. So we can see everything they're doing with the Interpro app, and it's keeping them very, very accountable. And then the crossover symmetry, you know, this is a tremendous time to even, we're not out competing. So, you know, we all talk about development. Sometimes people are playing year round, there is no development. Um, so right now, their, their shoulders, their elbows, their arms uh, with the crossover symmetry program has been huge for us. So I think they're gonna come out really really good mentally physically nutritionally um because of this but those those tools we're using have been gigantic in that process that's awesome that's that's really cool um larry you know when it comes to the training you're recommending for players to do at home is that being driven from you know a director standpoint or is it more from the the coaches underneath with their respective teams uh, it's, it's actually more, it's actually more from a whole coaching standpoint, to be honest with you. So, I mean, I mean, each one of our teams and granted, you know, I mean, we, we have our whole core, you know, philosophies and whatnot, but, um, we like our coaches to run their own teams, like their own organizations, essentially, so that they can actually take pride, um, and that can actually have a whole, whole mantra, culture, whatever, um, you know, in between what we already have here. So, um, a lot of our coaches, you know, they've all played at, you know, various levels and this and the other, but, um, uh, they all have their own their, their own ways of actually training up their kids. So um, uh, we, of course, you know, direct them and say, hey, man, like maybe we shouldn't do that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a little outdated or whatever. But at the same time, we, we allow we allow our coaches to to essentially run their own organizations, like their own organization. So um, everything is individualized and, and, you know, button up the way it's supposed to be. But we allow our coaches to really, really sit back and, and, and actually run their own team. And if we need to step in and show them, you know, the new ways of doing things with either blast motion or with you know what, what other training metrics that, that we use here then we go ahead and introduce it but uh, the whole models worked out great especially during this time as well cool so we're talking a lot about you know player training at home but obviously as part of an organization it's more than just the players you have a staff of coaches so what about you know coaching education because the coaches are also you know at home right now so Jordan, are you implementing anything to try and keep your coaches um, engaged or you know developing their skill set? Do you have any sort of longer term projects that you guys might be working on during this this down period? Uh, not necessarily a program, um, you know, but the the safe sport with U Triple S A and and all that good stuff and. Um, the coaches certification and things like that uh those were obviously important to us so we we gave them a deadline during this time period 
we had originally told them uh, April 1st was their deadline to get everything done and the certifications done. And, and for a lot of our guys here that, that coach for us in Houston, it's, you know, I told them it seems like it's monotonous and it seems like it's baby steps towards what you're working towards. Um, but the certification deal was big for us. But from a – with so much uncertainty about when we're going to be able to get back going and, and things like that, uh, like Mark said, we have what we call our player coaches manual, um, or, or maybe it was Kyle, uh, you know, the player's coaches manual where we have kind of our philosophies and things like that in it. We've sent that to them uh, that, that they've been able to go over and make sure they know exactly what we want to teach and how we want to teach it. And, and kind of like Larry said, you know, I tell all of our guys whenever they get here, I want you to put your own personal spin on it. I'm a firm believer in the fact that a group of people will take on the characteristics and personality of their leader. Uh, and with that being said, I'm going to coach differently than Mark would or Larry would or, or Kyle would. We're all going to coach in different styles. Um, so we it's important lot. for them to say that again. We bun a lot. <laughs> hey, you and I would get along, Mark, because double squeezes are my bread and butter. <laughs> That's it. To digress. If I can score two runs, if I can score two runs off of a bunt, way better than taking my chance of swinging a bat. But, you know, most of our coaches, and I, I don't know about these guys, but most of our coaches, they have full-time day-to-day jobs that they're working on, and they're having to figure out a way to get through this pandemic with, with their own families and their own situation. Uh, so I do handle most of the communication with our teams here in Houston, and we do have affiliate directors across the state that run their own organization the way they want to. Um, but for us, it, it's just been making sure that we're checking in on them and let them know we're here for them, you know, making sure that they understand that they're part of the family. We say it from day one, once you're in, you're in or in the way. And uh, that's a big part for us, not so much giving them something that, you know, they can do and have no end game in it because of the uncertainty of the situation. Great. Um, So we have had a question um, we've had a couple of questions come in. Um, this one is specifically for you, Larry. Obviously, uh, you're up in Ohio. Um, yeah. We talked a little bit about tryouts in California, but obviously seasons are different in Ohio. So right. when it comes to you know the weather and when you can play, have you altered your timeline for tryouts at all? No, no. I mean, I mean, you know, just being just being all the way transparent here. Um, I mean. Um, and if, and if any of our you know parents or you know kids are actually listening, you know, sorry about the news that I may be giving you right now, but you know, uh, with the whole with the uh, with the meetings we've been having with our with our bosses, um, our our owners is is uh, you know depending on depending on what's happening. Like, granted, we may have a chance to play over the summer, but we may have to push our whole season into the fall. You know what I mean? So so that means that you know you know just like what uh what what Jordan was saying that. You know, we don't want to hold on to people's money, don't want to do this and that and the other. But at the same time, trials may not happen here, you know. So, I mean, um, everyone may be playing on on credit all the way until until next year. So it's so much uh, so much uncertainty, so much um, so many questions that that we can't answer right now that as far as us trying to figure out when trials may be or or, or when our season may start, we've talked about it all, you know. So, I mean. As far as as far as uh, what may happen, we may have the same teams for for all of you know 2020. 2020. So, um, just a weird time though. Just a weird time. Yeah. Um, and then uh, another question that came in uh, again to you, Larry. Can you play the guitar on the wall behind you? Uh, uh, hell no. All right. So uh, I'm hoping I'm hoping by the time I'm hoping by the time the uh, the uh, the um, quarantine is all over, I'll be the uh, I'll be the uh, black John Mayer. That's my hope. So we'll. Okay. Uh, okay. We'll yeah, I was wondering because between Mark's karaoke and perhaps your guitar playing, we could get a <laughs> we could get a band going here. But uh, you guys, let me know when and where. Yeah, we. You know, um, there is one question I wanted to ask all of you. You know, before the end here. Um, you know, there is so much uncertainty. Uh, I really want to end with sort of a positive note. A lot of people have time on their hands. A lot of people get to revisit some of their favorite sporting movies ever. Um, Kyle, what's your favorite sports movie? 
Oof. Putting you on the spot. <laughs> Ooh, got a bit of a breakdown in communication there. Jordan, um, his favorite sport movie? Man. The Sam Lauder Major League. <laughs> nice. Mark? I mean... Mark, you got a favorite? Yeah, Jordan took mine. I, I got to go with Sandlot, man. That, that just that just makes you feel like a kid again and bring, makes, brings back all those amazing memories. So, yeah, that's when it's tough to be. And what about you, Larry? Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, not to be <laughs> stereotypical here, but 42 is actually uh, is actually mine. Um, a great one. But um, uh, during the whole time that I that I I really started to, uh, you know, take pride in my game and you know, um, uh, go on to play, you know, in college and, you know, a little bit after that, uh, 42 was kind of my whole driving force. So 42 actually took place of Sandlot when it actually came out. So 42 is mine. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it looks like we're about out of time. So thank you so much to everybody who took the time to attend. Uh, thank you to all of our panelists who uh, were part of today's session and, and sharing their strategies and positivities um, in this uncertain time. So Jordan, uh, Mark, uh, Kyle, Larry, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, guys. You. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Thank you. And uh, if you do have a follow-up question for any of our panelists, please feel free to reach out to 431sports at info at 431sports.com or on social media. We'd love to hear from you. Let us know any other creative ideas, strategies, or video challenges your organization has found helpful and engaging in your community. And finally, remember to regularly check the CDC website for the latest information on how best to protect yourself and others around you. Thanks, and stay safe.